I believe the word. I work on the word. The word works on me. Say it again. I receive the word. I believe the word. I work on the word. The word works on me. Now, today I want to be a pastor tonight and uh, speak to you about something that God has been speaking to me as a prophet to be teaching in this time and age. Amen. Somebody say the new order. Say it with conviction. Say the new order. Say it again. The new order. Say I will be fruitful regardless. Say I will be fruitful regardless. Say again, I will be fruitful regardless. Now, have you wondered why sometimes you really want to do something, but you find yourself doing something else? You feel like you know very well that this thing that I'm doing and right, but you still find yourself doing the same thing. You know very well that this thing is not supposed to be happening, but you find yourself in the same thing over and over and over again. And you know what is right, but you can't do it. Now, besides spiritual things, besides the fact that the power of God is in motion. And besides the fact that demons and witchcraft and demonic powers are also in motion, there are certain factors that influences the life of every individual. There are certain factors that influences our actions. What you do. And uh, I'm going to change your mindset today and run you through the scriptures afterwards. And I pray... It will help you. The first factor that influences what we do is our environment. Somebody say my environment. Your environment is what happens around you where you are. The place where you find yourself. The first thing that influences your actions is your environment you know if i give birth to twins uh, i pray god give it to someone else in jesus name hallelujah i'm done with that ministry if i if somebody if you give birth to twins because you know a prophet when a prophet speaks whether he's joking or true it happens amen who want twins let me Okay, I've got a daughter in the UK. She's called Abigail. If assuming Abigail gives birth to twins, and uh, she brings one here to live in Kenya and one to live in the UK, and they go through school and they go through life, even though they are twins, their outlook to life will be different. They are maybe coming from the same parents, but their outlook to life will be different. Why? Because of the environment they find themselves. Regardless of what, be how spiritual you think. If you are born in a quarrelsome environment, you grow becoming quarrelsome. If you are born in, in, in a violent environment, what happens is that it influences your actions. If you are born in a spiritual environment, it can also influence your actions. Like me, my biological father was a bishop. I knew the Bible before I became born again. Even though I wasn't born again, I, I, my, my, my biological father was a, was a man of God, but the fact that I was in the house of God, it influenced my actions. No script, I knew scripture. You can quote and I will quote. So your environment is the first thing that influences your actions. Number two, the second thing that influences what you do is the knowledge. What you know. Say knowledge. What you know influences your actions. There is no way a 60-year-old man 
Also, no, let me put it this way. Someone who has got a PhD will think the same as someone who finished high school. The knowledge you have acquired influences what you do. Let me bring you to church. Assuming you were born in a very, very, very violent area, but you acquire knowledge of God. Regardless of the violence and your environment, the knowledge you have received in the house of God now influences who you are in that particular environment. Are we here? Someone else who was born in a violent environment but didn't have the kind of knowledge you received in church will be different. So the second thing that influences your actions is the knowledge. Somebody say knowledge. Somebody that schools in Kenya would, be, would, would, would behave differently from someone that schooled in America. Regardless. It's the same school, same degree, but different behavior because of the kind and the quality of knowledge they received. The third thing that influences your actions is your experiences. Say my experiences. Say my experiences. Your experiences also influences what you do. After being born in an environment, having the right knowledge, the things you have encountered. Let me tell you this. Some of you that have gotten their, your heart broken three, four, five, six, ten times. Now, it's no more broken. It has been patched together. Hallelujah. Now, after you get your heart broken first time, second time, third time, by the time the fourth guy is coming, you'll be wiser. He will tell you, I will, I, I will love you from the moon and back. You understand, you have never been to the moon. You know, you, 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 the, the, the experiences you have influences what you do and how you act. Like some of us as pastors, after you have been betrayed, I mean, after you have been lied on and I mean, people you trusted, I mean, I mean, let you down and things like that. So when people come to you and they say, man of God, I will be with you for life. You look at them and you laugh. Hallelujah. Yes, your experiences also influences what you do. So your environment, number one. Your knowledge, number two. Your experiences, number three. And number four, your beliefs. Say my beliefs. Your beliefs affect what you do. Because you were born possibly somewhere else. You acquired knowledge in the house of God. That affected your thinking. And uh, it made you have some kind of experiences. And then it establishes some sort of a system of belief in you. That makes you think in a certain pattern. You know. You believe that when you come here and pray God will answer. Someone else believes that when they go to a wish doctor. God will help them. I'm oh, sorry. The wish doctor will help them. So your belief tells you you've got to be in the New Beginning Conference to have a visitation from God. Someone else believes something else so they didn't take an action of coming here. Are we following? So your belief system also affects what you do. Number, number what? Number five. Now, your belief system now establishes your values. Say values. What do you treasure? What do you treasure? What do you treasure? I have a value of excellence in everything I do. And so before I act on anything or I put anything down or I do anything, it must be excellent. It affects my actions. It affects what I do. It affects how I do things. Somebody say, oh, anything goes once. It is out there. It's okay. So they do things in a certain particular way because of their values. So your environment, your knowledge, your experiences, your beliefs establishes a certain value system for you. And then your values now determine the choices you make. Say choices. Say choices. Say choices. And then your choices now will lead you into making an action. For instance, tonight you could have chose to stay home or come here. You could have chose 
to wait. I mean, hang out with friends for um, 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 something else. Can you list the points seven all on the screen for me so that I, I, I run through something quickly and then we go? All the seven. So the things, the first thing that I said affects what you do is your environment. The second thing is your knowledge. The third thing that affects what you do is your experiences. The fourth thing is your beliefs. The fifth thing is your values. The sixth thing now, those things establish and makes you make certain choices that now will lead you into an action. So now, when Jesus came to this planet, he knew these things, so he did not just, I wish you could put them all in one screen, quickly, yeah? Jesus knew and understood these principles, so he did not just start criticizing people's actions. Check scripture. Jesus didn't start like that. He never comes say, oh, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that, like some of the old system of um, teachers made us to understand. Jesus came saying, I am bringing a new environment, which is called the kingdom of God. Say the kingdom of God. That is how Jesus introduced his message. He says, I am coming with a new kingdom, a new environment called the kingdom of God. And in this kingdom, this is the knowledge you need to have. Now he starts preaching. In this kingdom, things are done this way. In this kingdom, things are done that way. In this kingdom, things are done that way. So now, it gives people a certain kind of belief system in the kingdom. So if you are in the kingdom, he sells you the knowledge that is in the kingdom. And makes you believe and start thinking in a certain way pattern because now you are in a new environment even though you are in the world you are not of the world you are in a new kingdom and in the new kingdom there is a new set of knowledge that now establishes a certain belief system for you that that these things then makes you treasure certain things and not treasure certain things so before you make a decision or you take an action or you make a choice because you know you are in a new environment called the kingdom of God. What happens? Those knowledge you have received in this environment now influences your actions. Are you following? See the kingdom of God. The main problem with us is that you need to understand whatever you believe you become. Did you hear me? Whatever you, today I want to change your mindset a little. Because from tomorrow we are running, we will be flying 33,000 feet above sea level. Amen? Listen, whatever you believe, you become. If you believe you will be wealthy, you will be wealthy. If you believe you can rise to the top, you will rise to the top. If you believe you because of your village and the demons in your family, you can never prosper. Trust me, it doesn't matter the amount of anointing oil I pour on you, you will not prosper. Because you have accepted it that there is nothing that can be done about your situation. Somebody say, what do you believe? Look at your neighbor in a very funny way. Ask him or her, what do you believe? Proverbs 23, 7, about, I think, so the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, what is it? As a man from today, I want you to have, read one, go. It's okay. For as you think in your heart, so are you. So the first thing you want to, where do you want to get to? In this kingdom, we believe before we become. I said in this kingdom, we believe before what? We become. How do we get saved? The Bible says if you believe in your heart that Jesus is the son of God and he came to die for us and you confess with your mouth, then you will be saved. You for 
for you to become anything in this kingdom, you've got to what? Believe. Check scripture. Anytime Jesus healed anybody in scripture, Jesus never said, my anointing has healed you. Jesus always said, your faith has made you whole. In other words, in this kingdom we work with belief. Say believe. As you think in your heart, I want you to, today, I want you to believe you shall be fruitful this year. Regardless of how tough things are, have a mindset, have a certain mindset that regardless of how things are, you will make it, you will be successful, things will go well. Make it, I mean, a, a personal decision. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor. You know what? I will make it. Say, neighbor, I will be fruitful. Regardless of the demons in my house, I will be fruitful. Regardless of the opposition at work, I will be fruitful. Regardless of the people that want to fire me, I will be fruitful. Regardless of the people that are fighting me here and there, I will be fruitful. Regardless of the fact that I was denied that offer, I will be fruitful. Regardless of the fact that it's a new year, my pay has not increased, I will be fruitful. Shout, I believe it. Shout I believe her. Shout I believe. Regardless of what believe that you will be what? Say I will be fruitful. You know, let me give you this story. How many of us know that the insects called the bamboo bee? The bamboo bee, I wrote in this book, the bamboo bee is an insect according to the laws of aerodynamics. The bamboo bee should not be able to fly because its density and body mass does not allow it to fly according to the laws of aerodynamics. Yeah? But the bamboo bee does not know aerodynamics. He doesn't know the laws of Newton. Neither does he know the laws of Archimedes. He does not know those laws, so it is able to fly. Science says bamboo bee shouldn't fly because its weight and body mass should not make it be able to fly. Can this book fly? It can't fly because according to the laws of flotation and the laws of aerodynamics, its weight should not make it be able to fly. It has, things have not been put in place to boost it to make it fly. That is how the bamboo bee should be. It should not be able to fly. Assume this book is a bamboo bee. It doesn't know those laws so it is still able to fly. What am I trying to say? There are certain things, if you put it in your heart that you will make it regardless of the attacks, regardless of the opposition, regardless of who likes you or does not like you, regardless of who is fighting you or is it's not fighting you. You will be able to do it. Are we here? Touch your neighbor and say, I will fly. I will make it. I will succeed. In my heart of hearts, I knew one day I'll be a preacher. In my I was a very bad, bad is an understatement. But I knew in my heart of heart one day I will be a preacher. So I knew one day it will happen. My mind was made up. Regardless, I was in the club. My mind was made up. Regardless, people didn't believe in me. My mind was made up. I pray that today, today I am not, I didn't come to lay hands on your head, to lay hands on you to fall. I came to lay hands on your mind that my God, you have a mind change that will influence your actions. Give me Genesis. Let me go to scriptures. I somebody doesn't say, hey, this preacher, I didn't read Bible. Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41, verse 49. Now, okay, let's read what is on there. As I was saying, it's, now they managed to get it on the screen. Now, see, actions is at the bottom, right? Say actions. Before you make any actions, you have a choice. Before you could have chosen to stay at home or be here. So your action, which is at the bottom, there was two choices. 
or more. Now, you make the choice based on your values. What do you value? Church or home? That is your value. Now, your values are established by your beliefs. Are you getting me? Yeah, you, have, you value church because you believe that God can be able to do something. You get and now, how did you get your beliefs? Through your experiences. Sometimes you came to church. Things were bad. And God came through. Sometimes you stayed at home. Things went wrong. So you have a belief system based on the experiences you have had. And then now, how did you get your experiences? Through the knowledge. Your knowledge helps you to, I mean, I mean it helps you in, the, in your journey of um, experiencing. You, if you know that this guy is a bad guy, there is no way you do business with him. So you, the kind of knowledge you have is also based on the kind of environment you are in. So before an action happens, all these factors are at play, but you don't know. I get what I'm saying. Now let's get into scripture. Genesis 41 verse 39. Genesis. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, As much as, shall we read one go? No, I said verse 49, not 39. 41, 39 to 52. Uh huh. Genesis 41, verse, yes, yeah, shall we read one go? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now it says, and unto Joseph, today I want to teach on something very, very critical that will change your mindset. Unto Joseph were born two sons before, somebody say before. Before the years of famine came, and as enough, the daughter of Potiphar which as enough, the daughter of Potiphar priest of own bore unto him. Now Joseph had two sons. Can I get two gentlemen? Today I want to demonstrate something. Two gentlemen, two, two. One high and someone a bit short. short. Thank you, sir. And I want to get... Okay, thank you, Pastor Hezi. I think you can sit down for now. Now, these are the two sons of Joseph. Assuming I am Joseph, and I have given birth to firstborn and the secondborn, and these sons came before the famine. Next verse, quickly, let me read. And the name of this... Take it back, take it back, sorry. Verse 51. And, and Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. Somebody say Manasseh. For he said, now listen to this. In those days, people named their children to tell a story. What was happening in their lives, they used it to name their children. Like Jabez, the mother of Jabez gave birth in pain and called the name of Jabez. Jabez, when Rachel was giving birth to Benjamin, because of her situation, she nearly changed the name of Benjamin to Benoli. And the father said, no, I won't allow. So those days, they named their children to tell a story. So um, Joseph gives birth and he names his children to tell a story. He said, the, fair, the name of the firstborn was Manasseh. And he said, for God, for he said, because it, he was telling something. For God, he said, had made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. Manasseh means deliverance from my toil or forgetfulness of my toil and my affliction. Manasseh, Manasseh come, firstborn. Stay no stand here. Manasseh, he says, God has made me forget my toil and the pain in my father's house. And the second boy, he calls Ephraim, for he had caused me to be what? Fruitful in the land of my affliction. Joseph says, please stand here for me, pastor. This one shall be called Ephraim, for God has made me fruitful in my land of affliction. Now, Joseph establishes a belief system, saying, according to me, 
When I came to a foreign land, God made me forget my issues. God delivered me from the issues of my past. God delivered me from the things I was going through. And after that, he made me fruitful. Are you here? He said, God delivered me from my afflictions, my pain. And after that, God made me fruitful. So Joseph tells a story with his children. But I check scripture and I realize that that is not really true. And it's not always so. In the wisdom of Joseph, for God to make you fruitful, he has to first deliver you from the afflictions of your father's house. But Joseph was in a foreign land, but he was fruitful. Genesis 39. Genesis 39. 3 to 5. Genesis 39, 3 to 5. Quickly. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. His what? His what? His what? Meaning he was what? A slave. Amen? He said, he Bible introduces Joseph as his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made him, made all that he had prosper in his hand. The Lord made all that Joseph had what prosper. But he was still what? But he was still what? Can I prophesy over somebody? It doesn't matter the situation you find yourself. After tonight, God sent me to tell you, he can make you prosper. I decree and declare over your life. I don't care the number of demons that are fighting you. There is one word I heard from God to tell you. Regardless of the attacks around your life, whether you are in bondage or not, whether you are in captivity or not, whether you are being pursued or not, say yes the Lord. You can prosper. Say I will prosper. Do you know the most sweetest area to prosper? In the midst of your enemies. The most sweetest area to prosper is in the midst of your enemies. David said, he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I decree over your life. May Jehovah prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. I know that sister doesn't like you. I know that boss doesn't like you. I know that man doesn't like you. They want you to go down. They want you destroyed. But today I heard the spirit of the Lord saying, he will prepare a table. A table, a table, a table. He will give you a job in the midst of them. He will give you the contract in the midst of them. You shall receive the promotion in the midst of them. You shall be elevated regardless of the attacks. You shall be lifted regardless of the pain. It doesn't matter who is for you or against you. You shall still prosper. The Bible says, Adimi Kataya, no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. Listen, tonight, we will forget about our enemies a little and tell them whether you, de- you are there or not, I will prosper. Whether you fight me or not, I will prosper. Take me to Tanzania trying to kill me, I will prosper. Take me to Nigeria trying to bring me down, I will prosper. Put me in the papers, I will I will prosper. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, <laughs> start liking me because whether you like me or not, it doesn't change the mind of God concerning my life. It doesn't change what God wants to do in my life. Regardless of what you think or don't think, what God has purpose to do, he will do it anyway. You better start liking me. You better start connecting with me because the Bible said God is not a man to lie neither the son of man to repent has he said it and shall he not do it has he spoken and shall he not make it good it doesn't matter what people say or don't say you will prosper say hey say hey say hey I will prosper
prosper. Listen. The Bible said Joseph in the prison, even when he was in prison, he was still made what? A leader. What an anointing. In prison, he was still made, before he went to prison, there were other prisoners. But there is an anointing you can carry. Even in the midst of prison, even in the midst of frustration, you will still be elevated. You will still be elevated. You will still be elevated. Shout, I will prosper. So Joseph prospers in prison, but he is trying to establish a belief system. He's trying to set up a system to say, for you to be fruitful, you have to first be delivered. You have to first be free. Can I tell you something? It's all that I want to tell you is this. Whether you get delivered from that situation or not, you will prosper. If you get that, my sermon is done. I can drop the mic and go home. Are we here? Regardless of what. Because the thing is this. If God was to console that brother, that sister, that auntie, before he blesses you. In fact, if God was to even consult me before he blesses, I would give God 101 reasons why he can't bless you. But the good God, the, the good thing about the God we serve is that he does not consult your mother. He doesn't consult your father. He doesn't even consult your pastor. When he's ready to bless you, he shall bless you anyway. Can I prophesy over somebody? May you be the next candidate for a blessing. May you be the next candidate for a new car. May you be the next candidate for a promotion. May you be the next candidate for elevation. There is someone to be chosen by Yahweh. And I prophesy over hundred people here. May you be the first. May you be the first. If you are here, shout I receive. Shout I receive. Shout I receive. Hey. 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 It doesn't matter what is going on around you. You will prosper. Listen. Genesis 40 verse 1. In prison the Bible said God made Joseph prosper. Once God made Joseph prosper. You know, God made, and to understand that he started interpreting dreams in prison. His gift came out, not outside of prison. His gift was manifested in prison. Joseph, if he was outside in Potiphar's house, he would have never entered the palace. But for something to happen, for him to get to the palace, he needed some shaky environment, some rough environment, some environment that was, that was looking tough. That was when he birthed his gift of being a dream interpreter. Joseph always was interpreting other people's dreams. But when God took him to the prison, there was a new gift that was birthed in his spirit. He became a dream interpreter. Can I tell you something? There is a prison, the enemy thinks he's taking you. But they should get ready. It shall birth your miracle. It shall birth your dream. It shall birth your testimony. They think they are bringing you down. Let them bring you down. They think they are spoiling your name. They are giving you free advertisement. They think they don't want to push you ahead. God is making you, making you learn. Even in the midst of your affliction, touch on the and say, my neighbor, regardless of what they will do, I will prosper. I will succeed and I will excel. If you are here, shout, I receive. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. So Joseph establishes a belief system. So a time came that Joseph is about to, um, um, he, he's about, his father comes to where he is in the land of Egypt. And Joseph wants to present his two kids to his father to bless them. Give me Genesis 48 verse 8. Can I get somebody to act like um, um, Jacob? Somebody to act like Jacob. Jacob, no. No, I want somebody that is big. Jacob was, you know, Jacob, Jacob, somebody that is Jacob, like, you, you can become like Jacob. Yeah, Jacob was a, a man. Jacob, sir, you don't want Jacob's anointing. Now, sir, please stand here for me. You are going to bless these two children, and these are my sons. 
Now, Genesis 48, verse 8. Shall we read one go? And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? And Joseph said unto his father, They are my sons whom God had given me in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me. And I will what? I will what? I will what? Blessed. I want you to know the word bless. I've explained this word bless here. The word bless means to empower, to prosper, to succeed, to excel, and to do well. I will bless them. Next verse. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed him. Now I am Joseph. I'm bringing my sons to my father to bless. Now he, I, he brings them near and then um, Jacob or Israel kills them and embrace them. Uh-huh, next verse. And lo, God has showed me also thy seed. Uh-huh. Now he says, so, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, let me drop this. Israel said, I never thought I would see you. But I didn't, I've not just seen you, I've even seen your children. Some things you never thought you would see. I prophesy. Some things you never thought you, they, some places you never thought you would get. Some levels you never thought you would get. Uh, some houses you never thought you would be able to build. I prophesy. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree that may you see them. May you have them. May you experience them. In the name of Jesus. He said, I have also seen thy seed. Next verse, quickly. And Joseph brought them on out from between his knees. Now, uh-huh. And he bowed himself. Uh-huh. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his. Ephraim in his. This is Ephraim in his right hand. So Ephraim came here in my right hand. Ephraim in my right hand. This is Ephraim in my right hand. Uh huh. And Manasseh in his left hand. Manasseh was the first one. He puts him in his left. Why? Because he wanted Manasseh to face the right hand of the father. Because as the firstborn, he needed to receive the fatherly blessing from the right hand. Are you getting what I'm saying? And so he was doing it on purpose because in Israel, the father blesses with the right hand. So he wanted the first blessing, the primary blessing, the birthright to go to Manasseh. Say Manasseh. So he intelligently and wittingly brings Manasseh in his left so that the father's right will be on him. And brings Ephraim, the younger one, in his right so that the father's left will be on him. You get? Good. And Israel stretched out his hand. Now Israel, stretch your hands. Stretched out his hand and laid, he stretched his what? His what? His what? He stretched his right hand and laid it on Ephraim. How? Say how. And who was the younger? According to the custom, it's not supposed to be so. And his left hand on Manasseh. Guiding his hands with, in in other words, he was doing it on purpose, wittingly. He was guiding his hands on purpose. For Manasseh was the firstborn. And Israel, and Israel stretched out his hand. Next, Next verse. And he blessed Joseph and said, and he did what? God. Before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk. The God whom, um, the God which fed me all the days of my life. Long unto this day. The angel which redeemed me from all evil. Bless the Lord. And let my name be named on them. And the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac. And let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Next verse. And Joseph saw that his father. Read. Mm -hmm. So as 
Jacob was blessing the people. Joseph was feeling like, no, father, you are making a mistake. Your right hand is on the younger son. It's not supposed to be. And your left hand is on the older son. It's not supposed to be. But So he's trying to move his father's hand. Yeah? Is that not what is there? Uh-huh. And? Uh-huh. Not so, my father. You get? He said, this is the firstborn. Put your right hand upon his head. Let's hear what the father says. That is the interesting part. And the father did what? Refused. What are you talking about? Uh, anybody that will try to take your blessing. Anybody that will try to take your position. Anybody that will try to switch that which belongs to you. They switch the fire. They switch your name. They switch positions. I prophesy under this anointing. May nothing switch your blessing. May nothing switch your position. May nothing switch your level. May nothing switch that tender. May nothing switch that door that belongs to you. May nothing take that blessing away from you if you are here shout i receive shout i receive you know sometimes there are people in the offices they know how to twist the files they know how to twist the names they know how to erase and, and clean some data from the system so that you don't get the position but i pray in the name of jesus anyone that will try may they cast fire may they cast fire if you are here shall fire Listen. The boy said, and his father did what refused and said I know it's my son I know it I know what I'm doing this is what it is assuming this is 10 million this is 10 million and this is 1 million and somebody want to take your 10 million and give you 1 million God will touch the one that is giving and say no I refuse. It belongs to this one. I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. Are you there? May you be the one for the blessing. If you are here, shout I receive. If you are here, anybody that will try to take something that belongs to you, we command them to cast fire. Listen. <laughs> Say hey. Say hey. hey. What are you talking about? Let's continue. Let me run up. And he blessed them. He refused to switch it. Your blessing shall never be taken. Amen. Your position shall never be taken. Hadu Sabahaya. Come, 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 come. Receive it. He says, and he blessed them that day, saying, This is the part I want you to catch. Verse 20. That is where my sermon is. He says, and he blessed them, saying, In this shall Israel bless. Saying, God make thee as Ephraim. And as Manasseh. Now somebody doesn't understand. Maybe give me New King James. So that somebody can read and uh, doesn't get confused. Sometimes the D and the Shao and the Dao. One day I went to a church and I greeted somebody in the church. Say, I'm Dao well. I said, hey. <laughs> These are King James believers. I'm thou well. Man of God, how are thou? <laughs> Some people can intimidate. Hey! <laughs> yes. Say, may the Lord say, by you. Somebody say, by you. By you. Say, by you. Sha. Sha. By you will Israel bless. Now, that phrase, by you will Israel bless. Jacob was trying to say, you, Joseph, you have set a system that deliverance, Manasseh, from your pain and your toil before fruitfulness. But now, say, but now, 
this is how Israel is a typology of the people of God. If you study the etymology of the word Israel, it means people of God. Not, I mean, the meaning means the prince of God, um, um, of, uh, uh, of God. But now the etymology of Israel is a typology of the people of God. So he says, by you, by you shall the people of God be blessed. This is how, in other words, will the people of God be blessed. God will make you as Ephraim and Manasseh. He didn't say God will make Ephraim and Manasseh. He was not blessing Ephraim and Manasseh. He was blessing. This is how the whole nation of Israel will be blessed. How, for how will you be blessed? Jacob says, no, Joseph said, the son said, for you to be fruitful, you have to be delivered from the witches, from the sorcerers, from the demons, from all that. But now, the father says, my son, in this time and age, this is how things are going to be done. Somebody say, the new order. Whether the witches are there or not, you will be fruitful, Ephraim. And then God will bring deliverance to the Bahataya. You will first be fruitful. In business, you prosper. In marriage, you succeed. At the workplace, you make it. After God has made you very successful, as for the deliverance, it will automatically follow. But most of the time, we concentrate so much on the deliverance before fruitfulness. But the new order says, say the new order. The new order. The new order says, you will be fruitful in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the heartache, in the midst of the challenges, in the midst of the attacks, in the midst of the frustration, in the midst of every negative thing that is going on around you. God is saying, this is how the people of God will be blessed. They will have money. They will do well. They will buy cars. The witches will be dead by you buy a new car. The witches will be dead. They will be trying to pull you down, but you still make money. I wish I came to church. Things will be hard, but what God is saying you will be fruitful regardless. This will work for you regardless. They will try to scandalize your name, bring you down, pin you down, but still you will prosper. Aduni Mikataya, I prophesy over your life. It doesn't matter what is going on around you. God sent me to tell you you will prosper regardless. You will make it regardless. You will succeed regardless. I don't care the demons, the ten thousand demons that are around you. The Bible says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousands by your right hand but as for you as for you as for you as for you it shall not come near you only with your eyes shall you behold the reward and the salary of the wicked can I prophesy over somebody get ready for a flight get ready for a shoot get ready for a lifting get ready for your promotion get ready to be approved get ready for your marriage get ready for that door you have been trusting God for get ready for that visa whether that witch likes it or yes whether that man likes it or not whether that demon likes it or not whether that boss likes it or not you are ready to prosper you are ready to excel you are ready to make it if you are here shout I receive Shout I receive, shout I receive, shout I receive. Listen, it doesn't matter what they do, you will prosper. Be upstanding. Let's come on. Everybody be upstanding. Be upstanding. Are you ready to prosper? Are you ready to succeed? Are you ready to make it? Say in the name of Jesus. Do you have a problem in the name of Jesus? If you don't have a problem in the name of Jesus, shout it louder. Say in the name of Jesus. Tonight, by the word, I stand on the revelation of the word. And I declare, I will prosper. I will prosper. I speak fruitfulness over my life. 
over my family as I begin to pray I declare I will be fruitful I will be fruitful lift up your voice and come on begin to pray Anthony mi kabranta ta ya rapa pada bakanda branta ba ya rapa nda bada basha pa rapa pada branta dada baska branta rande de boska branta ba ya iya padua katete iye tere de boska rande de boska branta ta ya padua kabranta pa rapa nda badua ta ta ya rapa nda baswa ta ta ya rapa nda baswa ta ta ya ika pada bahasa we decree your God by the revelation of the word we stand and declare we shall be fruitful we stand and declare we shall prosper we stand and declare no weapon shall be able to contend with that which you want to do in our lives we speak prophetically over our lives over our families ikatu sabaha rande de boshatea andi bikabrantata rapapapanda basote ikatu ni bihantahaya rapapadua kabranta baya a panda bakosha pa a tedi akapata a toni mi hanta a padi atata somebody lift up your voice come on declare your fruitfulness declare you shall excel declare you shall make it declare no one shall switch your life no one shall switch that which belongs to you lift up your voice and pray lift up your voice and pray a di antotosa ra pa pa du akapate ya e ya pa du andiri mi hata Panda batanda bata, raba baba swane di brianta. Panda bakosha haya, iya toni mi hata haya, atoni mi ha branta ba. Raba baba haya, iya padi ada da basaya, padi aka branta ta. Father, we enforce that word in our lives. We enforce that word in our family. We enforce that word in this church. We decree and declare, regardless of the opposition, we shall excel. We shall be fruitful. We shall make it. Ipa tu sahaye. Iya padua de de bosa. Rapa pakende de hataya. Apadua kabrande de botos. Iya padua kabanda da. Apaya makose. Iye de de bosa ta. Ayaya bayaya ba. Adiya tatanda ba. Ni kabranta ta. Iya padua kabata. Iya podo bosa ya. Iye de de bosa branta. Rada da banta. Iya branda branda bashanta. Ika padua ta ya. Iya tada bosha. We speak over every house. We speak over every family represented here tonight. We decree fruitfulness. We decree the ability, the anointing, the power to excel, the power to prosper. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, we take captive of every power, every authority, every spirit that is influencing minds and hearts. Making them think they cannot make it. We break that principality, and we usher people, we usher families into the realm of possibilities. We usher people into the realm of excellence. We usher people into the realm of succeeding. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, we can do say, "I am a sutata, rada da badia na da batata, akosha tende he, di patu sabranta ta ya, akoro mo shate, i ya." Tada da bosha ya, atunda bate ya, apadua kabate se, ni ya didi bosha ya, apadua tete ya, rene bosha ta, akoda bahasa ya. We speak the ability to prosper over the church. We speak the ability to make it over every soul. We break every stronghold in their minds. We break every limitation in their hearts. And oh God, we pray, let minds be transformed, let hearts be changed. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Told you Proverbs 23 verse 7. You know Solomon said. As a man thinks so is what? So is he. As you think you become. So believe that what? In the midst of the attacks. 
in the midst of the frustration, yeah. you will prosper. Amen. You will be fruitful. Regardless. I always say, if all the demons in Ghana, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, India, Pakistan, Tanzania, even the demons from here, come to sleep, they say they are having a meeting in my lounge. I'll tell them, come. I'll open the door for you. Get to the bedroom and I will sleep. In fact, if I knew how to snore, I would have snored on top. Because I have come to a point and I believe I walk in a certain dimension of grace that no demon, no power, you will draw, you will try. They will do what? But like a wall, it shall bounce back to them. It shall bounce back to them. It shall bounce back to them. Huh. You are declaring today that may God give you the anointing to prosper. There are people who they are allergic to prosperity. They are allergic to money. When they hear prosperity, my, hey, me, I don't, hey! I'm reading a book. I, was, I, I bought a new book that I was, I was, I was reading on air when I was coming. And, and I realized that, hey, this is why believers, so believers, we are not prospering. A Jewish book, how, why Jewish, Jews prosper and Christians are not? The Jewish phenomenon. And I realized that in the Jewish culture, they say, without flour, there is no Bible. Without money, you say, they say, with money, with poverty leads to more transgression. That is in their books. But we say, money is the root of all evil. <laughs> Listen to me. The Bible didn't say money is the root of all evil. It said the love of money. Not money. See, most of the time we misquote. Money is, if you don't want money, every day when you pray, pray for me. God, give prophet David more money. Tonight, maybe you are not, you don't want to prosper. As you, I'm, I'm, leading, I'm leading prayer for prosperity. Pray for me. If you don't want you, maybe you want to go to heaven. Me, I'm already in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare. Tonight. Tonight. The anointing. The anointing. To prosper. To prosper. Come on me. Come on me. Now. 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 Oh Lord. Oh Lord. From today, from today I, declare I declare the wisdom, the wisdom for, prosperity, for prosperity, the ideas, the ideas for, prosperity, for prosperity, the grace, the grace to, prosper, to prosper, the anointing, the anointing to, prosper. to prosper. I receive. Oh Jesus, I receive the anointing. I receive the anointing. We release the forces of wealth onto our lives. We decree and declare, let the power that controls wealth be released upon our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, ideas for wealth, ideas for increase, ideas for prosperity. We claim them, 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 we claim them now. Adosaba Sekete, Raya Baswata, Rada we decree and declare we shall prosper we shall make it the power to excel the power to prosper we claim it right now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Rapa Padua Kamataya, Iya Dada Bosha Mantata, Abra Dada Bashwana Bratava, Rapa Papa Padabataya, Apa 
Abasute. Hey, 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 Abadosha. In the name of Jesus. Listen. You are taking your last but one prayer. And I want you to pray with all your energy. You are declaring. Anybody that will try to swish your blessing. Swish your fire. Swish your destiny. Swish something that belongs to you. May fire be released upon your head. I told you how I was called one day by a big man in this country some years back. And uh, I called my pastor friend to go follow me to his office. You know, I was the one that was called, not him. I said, man of God, let's go with me. And then we were going. We got to the gate. They were saluting him. They ignored me. You know, the way my body is. It doesn't matter how much I eat. I remain the same. You know, and he looks big. He looks collected. And you know me, I was always in my jeans and my top. He was in a suit. He looked okay. So we got to the office and he starts talking to the other guy. Man of God, prophet, welcome. Thank you. They start say, hey. I said, I had to put an injunction in this conversation. I said, I stood up and I said, sir, I am the prophet. Immediately he switched the conversation. I'm sorry, sir. Now the conversation came to me. Sometimes if you are not careful, hey. Uh, hey. somebody will take that which belongs to you. Hey. And I asked my, after we left, I said, ah, Charlie, what's wrong here? Are you the prophet? Why did you accept it when you say you are a prophet? I'm the prophet here. Were you called? You were accompanying me. You should have said, this is the prophet that was called. <laughs> Some people. In my own country, a guy went to a family house to go pay dad. When he got there, he got to the family house. Going to pay dad for a girl. He saw the sister. They said, which one of the ladies are you coming to pay dad for? He said, this one. They were like, ah. He said, no, 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 is this the other one? This one I want. He changed his mind right there and then. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> People do things in this life. Hey. Lift up your hands. Nobody shall stand in your spotlight. No. The top manager of Shell, one of the top managers of Shell in Ghana, I prayed for this man. He was given top position. I went to see him with my friend again. These days, that's why I don't go to places with friends, you know. <laughs> we are talking with my friend. I prayed for him to get a position. We are talking with him. You know, man of God, I like. God bless you. I'll be coming to London and we'll be... He, said, he asked my friend, oh, so who are you? He says, oh, I have a church here, down here. Um, um, uh, we are searching the city. He says, oh, I mean, he says, um, we are struggling. He says, oh, uh, then don't worry. If your church is struggling, don't worry. I'll, I'll give you $10,000 and you can buy a new set of instruments. After I was, I thought he was, if he gave him 10, I'm the one that prayed for him, so possibly maybe 20, you know, or 12 or 15. Say, prophet, don't worry, we will meet in London. Say, hey, did I pray for you in London? <laughs> he, the, up to today, the man has not given me a check of one pound or one dollar. He gave my friend 10,000. He was accompanying me. From that day, I prayed this prayer. Lift your hands. <laughs> Say, anybody... Anybody that will stand in my spotlight, will stand in my spotlight. I remove you. 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 In the name of Jesus. Anyone, anyone that will try, that will try to take my blessing, to take my blessing, switch my blessing. Switch my blessing. I declare, I declare, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire. Lift up your voice and pray. Come on, this is your last prayer. Pray like you have never prayed. Lift up your voice and pray. Push it harder. 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 Your blessings are not end up with wrong people. Your blessings shall not end up in wrong hands. Anyone that has a sign to bless you, they shall bless you. Ikaduni mi hata. Rada dabo shabadi mi katanta. Rapapada branta tandi mi antalaya. Rada 
In the name of Jesus. Say, I declare. I declare. I will prosper. I will prosper. I will prosper. I will prosper. Regardless. Regardless. I will make it. I will make it. Regardless. Regardless. I will excel. I will excel. Regardless. Regardless. I will be promoted. I will be promoted. Regardless. Regardless. I will move forward. I will move Regardless. forward. Regardless. Regardless. I declare. I declare. I will make more money. I will make more Regardless. money. Regardless. Regardless. I declare. I declare. My marriage will work. Marriage will Regardless. Work. Regardless. I declare. I declare. My children will make my it. Will Regardless. Make it. Regardless. I declare. I declare. My family will excel. Regardless. Regardless. 